Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Gertolf, we're here bringing you another Minecraft World War II Bath to Build tutorial. In this tutorial, we go ahead and building the Japanese IJN Tenru. Tenru was the lead ship in the two-ship Tenru class of light cruisers of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Tenru was named after the Tenru River in Nagano and Suzuku prefectures. The Tenru class was inspired to act as flagships for destroyer flotillas. The design represented an intermediate class between the light cruiser and the destroyer, which had few counterparts in other navies at the time. Although it was inspired by a similar concept to the Royal Navy's at Sri or Arshreza and C-Class cruisers. The Imperial Japanese Navy and Japanese shipbuilding industry were still closely associated with the British due to the Anglo-Japanese alliance and were able to improve on British experience. The Tendru in uh, particular did actually see quite a bit of service. She was present in the invasion of Wake Island as part of the attacking force and actually was one of the ships that was lobbying um, salvos at the uh, Wake Island. She also participated in the Solomon Islands campaign as well as the Guadalcanal uh, campaign as well. She was eventually sunk by USS Albacore submarine off of Manding, New Guinea. Um, so yeah, a, a pretty uh, good little service history for her and she uh, really served quite a, quite a bit for what it was. She only made it to 1942 but basically participated in most of the major uh, Japanese uh, conflicts uh, in the beginning stages of the war. So she uh, was a pretty cool ship and obviously had a fate uh, pretty quick demise to a US submarine. Before we go ahead and jump in and take a look at this build though, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Foss Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request of your choosing per month or your patron. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is obviously greatly appreciated and you get that cool benefit of having your request done per month or your patron. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and move in here and take a quick look here at the IGN. Tenro. So going ahead and moving in, we have the uh, front of the ship here. It's got the forward uh, gun, and then it's got the conning tower here. Pretty slim conning tower. As you can see, it really does have the, I guess, look of a destroyer, but it does have that length or kind of bigness of a cruiser. But you can compare it to like some of the other heavy cruisers and stuff like that of Japan and later war, and you can just tell just how quickly <laughs> design philosophies really changed uh, throughout the course of the war. Um, but basically, we have the calling tower here, um, nothing really too uh, fancy about that. We have the other gun right here. We then have our torpedo launcher uh, that's located here, as well as our kind of uh, middle deck section where we have our three funnels, some uh, lifeboat uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, lifeboat uh, rigging setups and all that kind of stuff in this the area here. We then have our rear guns, so a gun here and a gun there. And that pretty much makes up the Tenru. So, uh, a pretty long ship, um, but really lightly armed for what it is. Only four um, main gun batteries and a small assortment of anti-aircraft batteries. But still a cool ship and should make a really cool addition to your Japanese navies, especially if you're looking for some early war type of ships. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we're going to be going ahead and starting off with layer 1. Now, before we go ahead and get started with this uh, build, I do want to go ahead and mention real quick that if you do want to build this ship in the water, which I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do, you do want to make sure that layer 1 here sits even with your water level. You can see the blue concrete here representing that water level and that first red concrete block around a place is right there even with it. So just make sure that, that is positioned correctly in the water so that your ship is going to sit properly. Anyways though, with that all cleared up and good to go, we'll go ahead and continue on. Now going forward from the red concrete block, we're going to place another brick wall and a red stained glass pane to create the bow. We're going to go ahead and go back from this red concrete block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 red concrete blocks going down the center. And um, again, that'll be 24 in total. Uh, if we add one that first block in 24 after that brick wall. Now after that's done, on the back here we're going to place down a brick upside down stair and then a lightning rod. Now if you have this displayed out of the water, you can go ahead and use a skeleton skull 
for the props. If you do have this in the water, I would probably recommend a birch wood slab um, as a alternative. Um, either way will work though. We're going to go ahead and place down a red stainless pane and then a brick wall and that's going to form your center line there of the ship. We're going to go ahead and then place down a acacia wood fence gate on both sides of this stair here. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the fence gates. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a acacia wood trap door coming off those skulls like so. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a lightning rod that is going to come off those acacia wood fence gates going forward, then two brick top slabs to both sides, and then two brick ups downstairs after those top slabs. Uh, or actually, sorry, it's going to be three ups and downstairs. Then we're going to take our red concrete. We're going to go forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve red concrete blocks, three brick walls, and two red stained glass panes. Same thing will be over here. And we're going to go and do basically the same thing we did on the other side, just over here to this side. So that will basically form up both sides there. And once you have that complete, you're going to take a look top down view of it. And this is what you should have for our layer one all complete. Pretty simple, straightforward layer. And um, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down a stone block here on top of that glass pane, and then we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven stone blocks going back from that, fr fr uh, that front one. We're going to go ahead and then take our stripped acacia wood planks, or rather actually just wood, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two of these wood blocks back and then a stone block on the very end, a light gray stainless pane of both sides and then an anisay wall going forward from those glass panes. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks and we're going to place down a row of stone blocks on the side here. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 stone blocks forward and we're going to do the same thing over here. So just like that. And then we want to go and then take our polished black stone buttons. And we're going to place down rows of polished black stone buttons all the way along the side here. And same thing will be over here. Just like that. Then we want to place down two inside walls going forward. And then we're going to place down two like gray stainless panes going forward from that. So that right there is going to basically uh, form that up like so. And with that all done, here is a top-down view of what layer two will look like once complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer three. For layer three to start with, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this one here, and then a light gray stainless pane. We then want to go ahead and go back from this stone block with an additional stone block, so you have two. And then we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, and five of these stripped acacia wood, and then a stone block on the very end here. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three stone blocks on the side. One, two, three. And then we're going to place down three polished black stone buttons on the side there of those three blocks. We're going to place down two inner side walls going forward, two light gray stainless panes going forward, and then an item frame on both sides of this, or on the side of the glass panes, and then a crossbow in the item frame rotated face downwards. So, like that. After that's all done, we want to go ahead and then work on our. Um, aft section or, or midsection I should say. We're going to place down a light gray bed like so and then we're going to place down two acacia with pressure plates on both sides. Down the center from the bed we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone blocks and after we have those stone blocks placed we're going to go ahead and grab our end rods. We're going to place down an end rod to both sides. Then we want to go ahead and place down uh, one and two uh, these birchwood fence gates, one, two, and we're going to open these fence gates toward the outside of the ship. And then we're going to place down a acacia wood pressure plate to both sides. Again, the same thing here for our fence gates. I have these opened out to the side. And then again, our acacia wood pressure plates to both sides. And again, our two fence gates on both ends open out toward the side. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down our uh, second, so there's actually two torpedo launchers, my bad. Uh, our next torpedo launcher is going to be right here on top of this space, like so, and then a acacia wood pressure plate to both ends. Now, a quick little side note, if you are on Java, we can actually go ahead and place down item frames underneath the fence gates. So we're going to place down these item frames like so, and in those item frames, we're going to place down orange stained glass panes. And what this does, it just kind of helps keep a little bit of that orangish um, deck color 
on the ship and all that. So again, we're going to just do this to the sides there. So just like that. And um, with that all done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our calcite. And we're going to place down two calcite blocks and then two acacia wood pressure plates on both ends. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. We're going to place down one, two, three, four stone blocks down the center. A birch with fence gate here opened up toward the stone block on both sides. Again, for my Java players, we can place down an item frame underneath it and then an orange stained glass pane in the item frame. We're going to go ahead and then go back to acacia wood pressure plates on both sides. Again, a birch wood fence gate to both sides of this stone block. A item frame, orange stained glass pane in the item frame, again, if applicable, and just like that. Then we want to place down a acacia wood pressure plate on both ends, which will be followed with a stone button here in the middle. And then a second stone button in the middle, followed by a redstone repeater to both sides with the notches spread apart. Then we want to place down a stone pressure plate in the center, acacia wood pressure plate to both sides, and then a stone button right here. After that, on the very back here, we're going to place down a end rod and then a iron bar going up from that end rod. And then after we have that all done right there, that is going to pretty much complete this layer, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. So with that, that's going to complete what we have here for this layer, uh, layer three. And with that, uh, here is a top down view of that layer. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number four. So moving on to our next layer, we have layer four. Layer four is going to start with a end rod going on top of this glass pane here, followed by an iron bar on top of it. We're going to then place down a redstone dust piece behind that, followed by a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart like that. At this point right here, if you're on Java, I would recommend going ahead and placing down a stone brick wall. And if you're on Java and you have access to the debug stick, which can be uh, retrieved by using the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick using this command right here. Press and enter will give you this glowing stick and we'll be using this to change the properties of the wall. If you do not have access to the debug stick um, or if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend going ahead and using a stone brick stair instead. Um, so place down a stone brick stair so it's like this right here as an alternative would probably be a good idea. However, we're going to use our uh, wall right here and we're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod coming off it going forward for the time being. Now behind that wall, we're going to go ahead and place down an and side wall and then we're going to place down a stone block. We're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate over this space here and then another stone brick wall or stair with an end rod facing back this direction. On the sides, we're going to place down one, two, three, four pressure plates, one, two, three, four. After that, going ahead and moving to this section here, we're going to place down a andesite wall and then we're going to go ahead and then place down a iron trap door to both sides of this wall. We'll then take our birchwood signs and we're going to go ahead and place down birchwood signs around the two sides of these trapdoors like so. If you are on Java or Pocket Edition, that would also place down a sign right here. However, if you're on Java, we're going to leave that alone for the time being. We're going to go ahead and then place down a daylight detector. We're going to turn that to the night mode. Then another acacia wood pressure plate, another andesite wall, another daylight detector turned to night mode, and another acacia wood pressure plate. We'll place down an andesite wall, and then on the very end here, we're going to go ahead and place down an acacia wood trap door. On this very back section here, we want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, followed by a stone brick wall here, and then an end rod facing forward from that. We're going to go ahead and also place down a uh, stone stair here, and then behind that an inside wall, and then a stone brick wall with a end rod going back. Again, you can use a uh, substitute substituted um, stone brick stair for those guns. And then we just want to place down some item frames on top of these fence gates, like so. And after that is done, we're also going to place down a item frame over this calcite block here. And uh, we can go ahead and again grab our orange uh, stained glass panes, and we can place it down in those item frames. So just like that. And then after we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then... Uh, move into some Java features. So at this point, you're pretty much done if you are on Pocket Edition, Bedrock, or you are not using the debug stick. 
um, you're pretty much good to go for this layer and you can kind of go ahead and skip ahead to the next layer. If you are on Java, we're going to go ahead and do some Java uh, modifications here to the ship. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and need to do is we're going to need to grab some sort of block that we can tell apart from the, from the ship. So, yellow block or something. It really doesn't matter as long as you know to delete it later. What we're going to start with doing is we're going to go ahead and go off these fence gates. We're going to go ahead and kind of go up and out from out to the side from them. And we're going to go ahead and do this for each of our sets of two. So, we should have a total of uh, basically three sets of two on each side. Uh, basically directly up and kind of out to the side from these fence gates. Now we're going to go and then place down levers on each one of these blocks. And then using our debug stick, we're going to left click each one of these levers until we get selected face wall. We're going to go ahead and set this to the floor. And we want to go ahead and right click each one of these so that they snap down and they connect up to those fence gates. And we're going to go ahead and do this on both sides and we want to make sure that the levers are facing toward the outside. If they are not, you can go ahead and left click these until you get selected facing and you can rotate these around as needed to get them to face out to the outside. But if they face to the outside for you on the first go, you are good to go. And that will just be on the fence gates. Just be very careful not to activate these pressure plates because if you do, it will break the levers. So just keep that in mind. Be careful around those. The next thing we're going to go ahead and talk about real quick is going to be these walls here. Now the walls we can actually go ahead and modify and we're using a very similar technique as we did back there. We're going to left click until we get selected the selected side. Now it may be a little bit different for you guys depending on what um, direction you have the ship. For me if I press my F3 key I can look at my um, I can look at my uh, map it'll kind of show me it will show me that second paragraph that fourth line it says i'm facing toward the south so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to left click this wall until i get selected south and every side of the wall that's going to connect up to the end rod we want to go ahead and set it to low so we're going to set it south to low then this side since it does not connect up to that end rod we're going to go ahead and set this to tall and we're going to go ahead and then go to the back here this is going to be low and this one here is going to be tall so it's going to look something like that we're going to go ahead and then select the opposite, which is going to be the north. And we're going to go ahead and set this one to low, this one to high, this one to low, and this one also to high. So it's going to look something like that there. And it kind of helps create our, create our guns. It's uh, definitely a better design over just using that stair, so I definitely highly recommend using it. But yeah, really nice technique there for that. And that right there is going to conclude everything we have for layer number four of the build. And with that, we'll be moving into our last final layers. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our last final layers here. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna place down a piston on top of this wall right here. And if you are on Java, you may have your uh, wall break in or mess up. So if that's the case, uh, we'll just place down this birchwood sign here. And then you can go and then edit the wall and we can go and just bring that back side up again if needed. Um, an alternative to the piston here, we will be using a debug um, kind of design on this uh, section. You could really don't have too many options to do here as an alternative. Uh, most likely just going ahead and using a stone block will be a more than adequate um, substitute. We're going to go then place down a skeleton skull to both sides of the piston as well as a birchwood fence gate here which we're going to open up toward the rear of the ship and then a birchwood sign on that side. We're also going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this fence gate like so. After that's done, on top of the piston, we're going to place down a white carpet, and then we can take our debug stick, we're going to left click the piston until we get selected extended false prompt pop up, we'll right click that and get rid of that wood portion like so to complete our conning tower. We're going to go ahead and then place down our birchwood fence gate here, this is going to be opened up toward the front of the ship now, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence post on top of it, with an end rod to both sides. We're going to go ahead and then go up from the fence post with two end rods. And then on the very top here, we're going to place down an iron bar. And we also want to place down an end rod coming off both sides of the sec or the first end rod there. And then we're also going to place down a chain coming off both sides of this iron bar. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a barrier block between the chains and the um, end rods. And we're going to go place down buns on those barrier blocks facing forward. We're also going to go ahead and place down a barrier block coming off this iron bar. And we're going to go ahead and have this drop down at an angle... So just kind of going straight down like a staircase with our barrier blocks until we get to this point here. And we're going to go ahead and just take our stone buttons and just run it on the right side here of those barrier blocks like so. After that is all done for our smoke stacks or really our, I should say our funnels, we're going to place down an anti wall on each one of those 
walls going all the way along the side there. And then on the very back, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, end rod on top of this stone block here, a second end rod up. And we then want to go ahead and place down two iron bars up, so one, two. And we're going to place down a chain coming off both sides of those iron bars, like that. Um, after we have that done, uh, we're also going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this wall here. And again, you may have some problems with your wall messing up. If that's the case, just go ahead and use the same techniques that we've done before to go ahead and alter this. Anyways, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down one and two barrier blocks and one and two. We're going to then take our stone buttons and place down one, two and one, one, two and one like that for some rigging. And then for the rigging going down, we're going to place down a barrier block coming off this iron bar. It's going to drop down like so, drop down again, back two, and then drop down again, one, and then one more coming off this iron bar. And we then want to go ahead and place down a stone button, a uh, stone button, top, or we have the top, side, side, top, then we have side and side leading all the way up there to the top. And again, we're only placing them on the right side of the of the um, barrier blocks. Then for our rigging here, we're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block coming off this end rod, or sorry, this iron bar, and this one here. Then from this bottom one, we're going to go ahead and go down at an angle. So just like a staircase going down um, until we get to here. And we're going to go ahead and place down our buttons along the side there of those four barrier blocks. Now, at this point here, we're going to take our barrier blocks and coming off this one, we're going to place down an additional one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to go ahead and then go up. We're going to place down a barrier block and we have one, two, three, four, five again. And we're going to go ahead and then go up again and place down a row of barrier blocks. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six, bringing us to the front there. We're going to place down one, two, three stone buttons, then one, two, three on the bottom. Then we have one, two, three, four, five on the side. And then we have one, one, two, three on the top and one, two, three on the side. Now we're going to go and then take our barrier blocks and one last kind of cabling design here. We're going to place down a barrier block underneath this third one. And it's going to go ahead and go down at an angle all the way down and it's going to connect up to that fence post there and then we're just going to place down our three stone buttons like that and also before i forget uh we're also going to place down a skeleton skull that's going to come off this um birchwood fence post and once we have that all done right there that is going to wrap up uh what we have there for that and actually one last piece of rigging almost missed it we're going to go ahead and place down on the middle smokestack or funnel one two three barrier blocks going up and we're going to place down <clears throat> excuse me three buttons on the side facing toward the rear of the ship. And once you have that all done, that is going to complete your rigging. And with that, that's going to wrap up uh, layers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And uh, that's going to wrap up our tutorial here for the IGN Tenro. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial for this ship. If you guys do end up using that, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for the build. This can be a thing from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video, if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, all that fun stuff. And um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can, again, pledge a small amount of um, money per month in your patron and earn a vehicle request, um, you know, again, for each month that you're a patron. So definitely feel free to check that out and take advantage of those benefits. Um, but other than that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gear 204, and I'll see you guys next time.